All right, so I'm going to show you how to set up and play Euro Crisis. Uh, these are four different country boards that I placed randomly around the main action board here. So as you can see, we have Spain, we have France, we have Ireland up here, and over here we have Greece. One of the first things you're going to do is place these pink markers onto the country boards. These are going to determine outrage and this is going to determine uh, loans that a company takes. So what you're going to do is this, each company has the loan section and you're going to take your pink marker and put it uh, in the shaded dark spot there. And you're going to take your outrage marker and put it up in the square there and you're going to do that for all four boards. So let's just take a look at a board here so I can kind of explain what this is. So this is a, a country. These are some of its um, major landmarks or what have you. And these things are owned by the government, but they will be sold off to investors uh, because of the amount of debt that a country is accruing. And you're going to be one of these investors trying to buy up these places. Uh, and these are the points you'll get for each place that you purchase. So if I purchase SNCF, um, then I will get one point. La Post, I will get three points. All right, and the points are going to be tracked on the main board up there, which I'll show you later. Uh, so this is the loan. This is going to move either left or right or up or down. And the way that this moves, aside from certain card actions or certain board actions, is set up in this place. These are the government sections of each board. And so what you're going to do is there's a stack of these random cards here. And you're going to draw one card randomly for each of the four nations. So if I just drew a card here and I looked at it, it's going to tell me how to set up the government for France. All right, so I'm going to, t there's a major party and a minor party. So the major party is on blue, which means you have these two types of cylinders here. You have the taller, thicker one and the smaller, thinner one. So the major party is going to go on the furthest to the right track uh, of the government there. And then the minor party is going to go wherever the dot is there. And then that's all you'll need this card for. What this is going to do is based on either if the party switch it's going to cause things to happen. Essentially what will happen is if the government changes, uh, the outrage will build up. And once the outrage gets into this position here, uh, there could be a uh, an uprising of the people, which will have effects. Uh, the other thing that it does is if you move these things inwards from right to left, it will cause the pink marker to go from right to left. So moving this, you know, if I move this down one, two spots there, it would move the pink marker one, two spots there. If I move this one, two spots to the right, it'd move that one, two spots to the right. If I change the government, let's say, and I moved this here and moved this here, and then on another turn, I move this up one, two, three. Well, it would go up one, two. It can't go up three because um, it's blocked there. So think of this kind of like a joystick on a video game is how I kind of think of it. And if you push the joystick up, it makes the pink thing go up. And if you push the joystick down, it makes it go down. Uh, these represent different parties. Uh, this is your conservative party, communist party, socialist party, and I think this is like your liberal party up there. And they have explanations in the rules for what they all mean. I'm not going to get into that. All right, so in addition to setting up each country's system like this, you're going to have these different markers here, and you're going to use three of the four different categories. So this is the public anger markers, these are the economy markers, and these are the black market markers. And these are going to go on the main board. As you can see here, it has a section for the public anger there, the economy there, and the black market there. And so you're randomly going to choose three of these. So if I chose this one, this would be the top spot of public anger. And I choose one randomly of the economy that will go in that spot and then I'll do black market for that and then you're going to do it for all of the different categories. All right so here I have it all set up and then there's three of, of the markers that aren't used and those will just be removed from the game. So the game goes in this cyclical uh, fashion here around here. 
Uh, so there's going to be four different, think of it, uh, seasons or quarters of the year that are going to play out. And you kind of do your final cleanup actions and then you start a new year and you go over. Uh, so after one year, during one year, between after the first quarter, this event's going to resolve. Then you go into the second quarter. Then this event's going to resolve. Third quarter, this event's going to resolve. Fourth quarter, move around. Then these are removed after they're used and these slide up to replace them. And then you go around again. You do it a third time and then you see who has the highest points and that is the winner. And as I have said before, uh, so this is the point track here. And the way you get points is by buying these national industries and getting points for them. So if I owned this industry, I would get 15 points and I would get 15 points here. And then that plus some of the resources I have less left over are going to be uh, what determines the amount of points I have. And that's going to determine who the winner of the game is. This here is an income track. You can go bankrupt if you uh, go into a negative 20 debt or beyond negative 20 debt. You're bankrupted and you're out of the game. So it does have player elimination if you are just uh, a mess at the game. Uh, it does have an income cap as well at $40. And the last piece of setup is just placing the uh, gold market token. So this yellow uh, cube represents gold. That goes on this spot here. It has a white cube there. And then you have armor for weapons. That's going to start on that line. And this will go up and down. And that's what the black market affects. Besides player cards, the black market will go down each round based on whatever the token is here. So after the third quarter, the price of gold is going to go down to you and the price of ammo or whatever weapons is going to go down to you as well. All right. All right, the other thing that you're going to do at setup is give players the resources that they have. So you have a pool of guns and ammo. Each player is going to get four pieces of gold and three uh, weapons. Each player is going to get two discs to go on the board. You have these two larger discs. If you're playing with three players, you're going to use both of them. If you're playing with four players, you're going to remove one and only use a single one here. And then you're going to get four markers to use for loans. You have a supply of more markers that you can get later to, to get more money or wealth. You also have, uh, each player has its own little kind of uh, housing, not really housing, but just kind of showing which um, industry they own. Um, these might look familiar from other games to you. So they're going to not get this, and then you're going to have eight cards, action cards, that you will use to choose during the game. Each round you're going to play four of these eight cards. Uh, and then each player is going to start with money. Player one is going to start with $11 million. Uh, player two, 12. Player three, 13. And player four, 14. Uh, I am going to use chips instead. So my red ones will each be worth $500 million, or 500000 And then my whites will be... 100,000. So the red player would start in this scenario with 11 million or yeah, 11 million dollars. All right, so once everybody has their cards, their money and their pieces, you're going to take your little discs and you're going to determine your player order however you want. I'm just going to go alphabetically, so blue, green, red, white. These player discs are going to be placed on the negative 4 income spot. And then you're also going to have the discs on the zero spot for the scoring. Then what's going to happen going from first to last. So first is on the top here. Last is on the bottom. And if any time in the game uh, there's an issue where income determines some kind of a tiebreaker, whoever is on top um, of the tied players determines tiebreaker for income if that comes up. So what you're going to do is blue is going to first choose where to what country to invest uh, in. And then when they after they invest, then green will do it, then red will do it, then white will do it. And that's going to get you your first amount of money. So for example, if group blue chose to invest in Spain, the first investment always has to be at the this four spot here for every country. 
So the first investor in this country will be the four there, the first investor will be four there, and this next one will be there. So you can choose whichever country you want to invest in as long as nobody has invested in it yet. So if blue chose to invest there, then it would be green's turn to invest. And things you might want to look at is what's going to be happening. You can see that uh, in Italy or um, Ireland, public anger, that's what this three means. This means that public anger is going to increase in Ireland, which is this track here with the cube on it. If it ever gets into the fist, uh, it could start an, an uprising. So you know at the end, at after round one, this will go one, two, three, and you know it'll be closer to an uprising. And I'll go over what that would mean. Um, so he knows that's going to happen. He can see that the country of Greece, so the Greece market, it's going to the loan market, it's going to go up by two, meaning this will move to the right two spots. Now, if this marker ever gets up all the way to the end, then it goes up. If it ever ends up here, that's going to cause uh, something to happen, which you probably wouldn't want to have happen if you are invested in that country. So I know that these two countries are going to have things happen to them right off the beginning. And then this just shows that the cost of gold and weapons is going to go down after the third quarter. So maybe green, I don't know, I'll just say green's going to choose to invest in France. Then, so what happens is, also when you put your marker on here, that gets you $4 on the income track. So blue would go from negative 4 to 0. And now green would place theirs. They would go from negative four to zero because they put their marker on the four spot and you really don't have a choice. That's what you gotta do anyway. Then it would be red's turn. So red has to decide if he's going to invest in Ireland or in Greece. You could see that the uh, chart for the pink marker, the uh, loan marker, it's much shorter. It's the shortest in Greece over anybody else. It's the largest in um, France. Now, you can see that the points you get climbs uh, at a slower rate in France. It's more, there's more stability here. You can see in Greece, it's got really large jumps, uh, but it can cause more instability. It's outrage marker shorter. It's loan market is shorter, so it could cause more instability there. Uh, so that's something you'd want to consider. So I'm going to have uh, red invest in Ireland. So now it goes from negative four to positive, I mean to zero. So it's going to go like that. Now there's only one choice left for white, so they have to invest in Greece. And then what happens is, so they go from zero to four, then you do a next investment and you're going to go from top to bottom. So now uh, it'll go first to white, then red, then green, then blue. Now, uh, from this point out, where you invest, uh, it's going to be the second column in the five. And the reason is, is because the pink marker is in the five um uh, row, the row for $5. If this was up in the $7 row, once the markers get over to the right far enough, you could start making $7 investments. If this went up more, $9 investments. On the other hand, if it went down to two, uh, you would only be able to put your marker in the $2 investment. So if this goes up or down, determines how much um, money or income you're going to be able to get. And as you can see, that affects your income here. And this income track is only determining number one tiebreakers, but also at the end of the year, it's going to pay out cash. So if you spent all your cash over the year doing stuff with it, uh, at the end of the year, wherever you're at on here, you will get paid that many millions of dollars. So if you're at 15 at the end of the year, you will get $15 million. Therefore, having higher investment numbers on these tracks helps you out. Of course, to have higher investment numbers means this has to go higher, means it's more likely to end up in the uh, zone, which kind of wipes out all the loans and you lose all your money if it ever gets to this spot. All right, so white goes next. White's just gonna um, double down in Greece. He's gonna go with a Greece strategy. Uh, red will 
Oh, so then, so that's five dollars. So light goes up positive five dollars. Uh, red is going to invest in Spain here. So red now goes up five dollars. And green will invest. He could double down in France or he could diversify by also going into Ireland. I'll have him diversify by going into Ireland. Green will go up five dollars. And now blue has no choice. Blue has to go into France because it's the only one that has, doesn't have two columns filled. You can't, in the beginning rounds, you can't invest in another country that uh, has two investments on it when you're doing your second placement. From this point out, though, like everyone could just invest in um, France. You don't have to like make it balance throughout. It only has to balance at the beginning of the game. All right, so let's take a look at the cards and see what they do. So you have two, four, six, you have eight cards here. In a turn, you're only going to play four, th four of them. You can never play the same card twice, as in I couldn't play this Rome card twice. But I do have two Rome cards, so I can take the Rome action twice, but I couldn't take it three times because once I play both of my Rome cards, I won't have them anymore to play until the next year. So you have two cards for Rome, two cards for London, two Moscow, one Brussels, and one Frankfurt action. All right, so if we look at the Rome here, the Rome card allows you to um, move the party tokens around on the uh, board. And that's what I was talking about, like the joystick thing. So I could take the um, whichever party is blue so let's say i'm looking let's say i'm looking here all right so i can move the blue party to the left which would move the pink marker to the left decreasing the amount of people who can take out loans in that country because it's moving to the left or i can move the pink marker to the right moving the pink marker to the right meaning more people could take loans in that country but also pushing it closer to the point where maybe all the loans get wiped out if it ever ends up here. Uh, there are no markers in these spots, so I can't make it move up or down. All right, uh, but there is a card that allow you to do that. So that is the Rome action. It moves your markers here. And oh, to do that, you have to pay $1 million every time you move the marker. So if I wanted to move this one, two, three, four, that's the furthest I could take it, four spots to the left, um, that would cost me $4 million. However, the marker can only go one, two, three at this point, so I would only have been able to move it that far anyway. Uh, same thing if the marker was here, let's say there. Well, okay, no. All right, say the marker was there. I could pay Let's see one. So if it was here, I could go one, two, three. And what would happen is it would go one, two, and then for three, it would go up here. And then that could eventually lead to this uh, collapse of the loans. And if you would lose your marker on here, it means you lose your mark, your income goes down by that much. So you can imagine a lot, of, if it ever gets here in France, you go, there's a lot of people invested in France. Um, you're probably gonna have shared interest for that not to happen. But in other places like Greece, where the track's much smaller, you might have people trying to destroy the loan market upon you. All right. Uh, next, we have London. London is where you can add more of your markers like this into the loan track. Now, remember, you can only you can never have more than one marker in a column. So the next marker would have to go here. And where would it go between the two, four, and five? It would go in the five because that's where the pink marker, that's the row that it's in. If the pink marker was there, the next person to take out a loan in France would have to place it in the four spot. And in doing that, you would increase your income by four. If it was up here and it got to this point and you were able to put a marker there, you would increase your income by seven. And increasing this income is only determining the amount of money you get at the end of the round. And it's the tiebreaker feature. All right, so again... That's what the London card does. Next, you have two Moscow cards here. This is you can buy up to five gold and or up to five um, weapons. So I could buy a total of 10 things here. 
uh, five gold and five weapons or however many I want. And that's going to be based on the prices here. So you can see right now the prices for weapons is two and the prices for gold is three. So for each weapon I buy, it's going to cost me two million dollars. And for each gold I buy, it's going to cost me three million dollars. After I do all my purchasing, then you can see here the cost of gold and weapons is going to go up one. So it would just go up one and up one if I bought those things. All right, so that is uh, the Moscow card. Brussels allows you to change the dominant government and then it's going to create public outrage. So back to this example here when we had this situation here and I said, look, you can't go up or down because there's no markers there. Well, if I change the government, what I can do is I can change the major ruling party and I can put the major ruling party anywhere I want on here, but then the minor party has to go to, to um, wherever the major party just was. So for example, if I took the major party and I moved it to red, the minor has to go to blue because that's where the major party came from. But now on another turn, somebody can now move this up, causing the income thing to go up. All right, so that is how you switch them. Of course, moving this is a different action. You would need the Rome card to actually move them up and down or left to right, but you need the Brussels card to switch where they are placed who's the controlling party. And then lastly, you have Frankfurt card. Um, so you only have, like right now, white has two markers left to invest. If you wanna get more investment markers, it's gonna cost you two income each time for each one you take. So if I spent eight income off the income track, reduced my income that I'm gonna get at the end of the year by eight, I would get four more of these things to invest in to um, the countries, which would raise my income up again and create larger payouts for me to use that money to do things like buy weapons uh, and gold or win tiebreakers and things like that. All right, and then so for the last phase of setup, you do um, you auction off the cheapest property uh, that each state has uh, available. And uh, you do that by bidding gold, All right? So each player starts with four gold. So what's gonna happen is the first property up, you're gonna start in the upper left-hand corner and just kind of circle around. So that is also something to consider when you set up, because if you set these out randomly, um, then that might determine what you wanna bid on. So for example, I had white double down in Greece. And the reason I did that is because everybody starts off with four gold. All right, so this first one is worth six points. So what happens is if there's ever a tie in bidding, whoever has their marker the furthest to the right is going to win any ties. So with the bidding, I just decided to have Greece say, hey, you know what, I'm just gonna take over the um, ports of Greece because I will automatically break ties. Everybody starts with $4. So they, you, what you do is you secretly choose from zero to however many gold pieces you have available to you, and you just put them out, and then everyone reveals at the same time. Highest bid wins. Well, White's going to win this. I'm just going to have White spend his four gold, and he's going to get this thing. So what's going to happen is White is going to put one of his buildings here, and now White is going to move up on the score track to... Six. Now, that might be an overbid for six points, um, but we'll just try it out and that's what will happen. So then next it goes to um, Ireland over here. So if there are any ties, green is going to win them. So there is a two value property there. The next one is going to be France for one point, And then after that is Spain for four points. So green knows he'll break, he'll win any ties here. So, you know, for that, you can either think like, well, everybody still has four, but do I want to spend four for two points? Probably not. So what are other people going to bid? Or do people think that because I have a tiebreaker, I might go for this. And in reality, I'm going to hold off and hold out 
to try and get the 4.1 in Spain. The catch to that being, if red decides to hold out on the other ones also, then green would be going up against red, and red has the tiebreaker advantage. Another thing you could do is not win any of these, uh, and then if people spend their money going into the round, you don't have much gold competition, and then you can kind of choose which second level property you want, and then all you have to do is um, essentially bid whatever the, either one more than anybody has or the same as anyone has as long as the tiebreaker favors you. So, for example, another thing that Green could do is he could not bid on any of them. And then on the next round, if he has four gold and nobody else does, he could go for 12 in Greece or he could go for four in Ireland or he could go for three in France or he could go for seven in Spain. So... Let's just say he does that. So let's say he bids zero. Let's say uh, red bids one. And let's say uh, green, not green, what else? Uh, blue, blue bids two. So blue wins it for two. So this goes there. Blue puts one of his buildings here. Blue gets four or uh, two points. So I'll put blue there. Now it comes around to here. Blue is the tie breaker winner here, but he's going up against red and green, which have four. So he goes, well, I could bid two and somebody would have to bid three to take it from me because I have the advantage. Green has to decide if he wants to jump in for the one point and red does the same thing. So let's just say blue bids two, red bids one and green bids zero. All right, so blue wins it with two, meaning blue will put out another building. So now he gets one more point. So he goes up to three. And now it comes to Spain. And so green can either bid four and hope he doesn't tie with red and get the four points. Or he could not do that, but make red think that he would have to bid four, red thinking he would have to bid four to win it since he's the tiebreaker, therefore depleting red of his ability to bid for the round. Um, so that's an option also. So I think what Green will do is he will bid two, saying I'd be willing to spend two dollars for four points. And let's just say red was worried for some reason, and let's say red does bid four, so red gets it for four, meaning he doesn't have any money left, or any gold. He puts his building on the uh, spot there, and he goes up to four here, and now uh, that's it for the round, and so now you actually start after that initial bidding round, you actually start the game.